Well, if you're stuck at home because of a statewide quarantine, like me, then you might need something to do. And I thought, why not come out in the garage and build some jumps? And today I think I'm gonna build some gates. You wanna learn how to build gates for horse jumps? I'm gonna show you how I do it right now. Hello, my equestrian friends. It's me, Lisa, the Budget Equestrian. Welcome back to today's video. And like I said in the beginning, if you are stuck at home and you can't really go anywhere, you might be looking for a project or two that you can do. And I'm out here in my garage. Yes, it's messy, but I have lots of stuff, lots of wood that I can use to build different horse jumps. And I thought today I would come out here and make a couple of gates and walk you guys through the process of how you can make gates for horse jumps. You don't need a lot of tools to make a gate and a gate is an incredible filler for a jump. And if you've gone to any hunter jumper shows, I'm sure you've seen gates that are used as fill in horse jumps. A completed jump that has a gate in it really encourages the horse to jump because it is a full jump and it's more encouraging and inviting for the horse to actually jump it. And you really don't need a lot to make a gate. I'm gonna use two by fours and some remnants of fence boards that we have in the garage. Basically, I'm not going anywhere, I'm not buying anything. I'm just gonna use what I have in the garage and see how many different gates I can make. So, let's make some gates. So the first thing I did was find some wood. And here I have a two by four and another two by four. And I already had the frame of one gate made, so that's like a bonus. And one more two by four. And another two by four. So that means I have enough wood to make three gates. Let's see, one two, and three. So for the top of the gate, I keep the two by four eight feet long. But for the bottom of the gate, I do cut off probably about a foot or so of another two by four, and that's going to be the bottom. This makes it so that the frame is complete and the inside or the lower portion of the gate is just a little bit shorter. So it's not gonna hit the sides of the standard when you set up the gate. And once I cut the two by four, now I'm cutting a piece of one by four inch lumber and I'm making it 16 inches long because this is going to be the sides for the frame of my gates. And safety first, I have gloves on and I have my glasses on so that basically acts as my eye protection when I'm using the power tools to cut the wood. So now that I have the sides ready to complete the frame of the gate, I'm just going to set it up like a frame. And I wanna make sure to have enough on top to fit into the jump cups. So I measure off and make sure I have at least three inches on each side. And the closer I get it to being exactly the same, the better. And 
So for this gate that I'm making right now, I made the side pieces 16 inches long. And then to attach the side pieces, first I pre-drill the holes. This will really help to make sure I do not split the wood when I attach it with the screws. So I highly encourage you to take an extra two minutes and pre-drill the holes on the sides before you attach it to the two by fours. And then when you're putting the screws in, you just wanna tighten it down so it's just tight, just kind of cinched up tight. You don't need to go all the way through the wood because that can cause it to split. So you just wanna get it just to the edge of the one by four when you attach it to the two by four. Now for this gate, this is gonna be fun. I decided to cut the bottom two by four at an angle. And this will give a really neat gate, I think. I hope, we're gonna find out. But all of the slats of the gate are gonna be going at angles. And again, I just really wanna make sure that I have enough on the top where the gate is going to sit into the jump cup that it's going to, number one, be even, but also have enough room on each side so it can sit stably in the jump cup. Again, pre-drilling the holes. And then attaching the screws. And the screws that I'm using are one and five eighths inch long. And now I have three completed frames for my gates. Thankfully, one has already been sanded and primed, so I only have to sand two of the gate frames. But this is a really important step because it just gives a more professional and finished look to your gate. So if you can, just spend a few extra minutes sanding everything on the front and back side of the frames. Like I said, it really does make a difference and your gate will look that much better. And once the frames are all sanded, then it's time to add a primer coat of paint to the frames. And for my primer paint, as always, I'm using Kills 2 Primer. This is interior and exterior primer. You could leave it white like this if you wanted to, but I really like this primer because it is water-based, meaning I can rinse out my brush with soap and water. And the paint goes a long ways and it dries really fast. And by having a primer coat on first, it actually gives a really nice base so that when you apply your paint, it's going to have a nice uniform color and it just looks better. So that's why I like to do it. And that's just how I've always done it. One side is done and then I flip it over and do the other side. 
I do find that when you do the primer coat, if you just do a thin coat of the paint, it's fine. And it is okay to just flip it over, even if it's still wet, I haven't had any issues with it. But if you want your gate to be perfect, you could do one side, allow it to completely dry, and then do the other side. Now that my frames are drying with their primer paint, now I have time to cut out all of the slats or pickets that are going to go into the center of the gates. And I had a lot of spare wood or extra pieces of wood that we had from other projects, so I made use of that and just used these remnant pieces of wood to make the slats for my gates. Now some of the wood I used is wider, like six inches wide, and some of it's thinner, like three or four inches wide. But that's what's so fun about making your own gate is you can make it any way you want. So if you want thin slats, if you want slats that are angled, if you want little cutouts, whatever you wanna do, you can do it. me testing out the larger slats to see what it's going to be like and then I decided to cut out little angles in the center because I'm going to have little cutouts on this gate. And to do that I just used a jigsaw to cut out basically like a triangle on the center of one side of this wood which is actually a cedar picket that is um, six inches wide. Like that and for these cutouts there's going to be three pairs so I'm cutting out six boards with the triangles And of course, you know I have to sand it. Now this is another gate that I'm making and trying to figure out again what type of pattern I'm going to be using. And this is the angled one, so I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do it, but just playing around and seeing what I can come up with with these different slats or pickets on the center of my gate. This is 
kind of what it'll be like. This is the back view of the gate. And then this was the pre-finished frame that I already had and I decided let's mix it up a little bit and let's use some thinner slats with some thicker slats. And just like I did with the frames, I also painted every single slat, front, back, sides, everything with Kills 2 Primer. It may seem like it's a lot of work, but honestly, what else did I have to do? I was staying home anyway, so why not do something useful with my time and make something? That was why I decided to make three gates over the weekend. I had to try and find some paint still in the garage that I could use for my frames and for the slats as well. And I remembered that I had this turquoise paint. This is the paint that I used when I was making the Voltaire rails and I didn't use very much of it so I had a lot of this turquoise paint left. And I thought it would be a really pretty frame for one of the gates that I was making. Then I found some brown, which also I bought when I was making the Voltaire jump rails. And I thought, why not go with the Voltaire theme? And I'm gonna have Voltaire colored gates that will go with my rails. But these gates are eight foot long and my rails are 10 feet long. So I'm probably gonna have to do some eight foot long rails that will match these gates. But that's a video for another day. All right, so all of the frames are ready. Now it's time to start putting the slats in place. I also did already paint the slats with the Rust-Oleum white paint. I just didn't show you that part because you already saw me painting and I'm pretty sure you get the gist of painting. Okay, so this is the white gate that is pretty much done. The slats are dry on one side, so I can go ahead and attach them to the frame of the gate itself. But I think I'm gonna save the rest of the assembling of the gates until the next video, because I don't want to rush it and I wanna show you guys how I do it step by step. And this is such a fun project, an easy project to do, even if you don't have you know, outstanding carpentry skills. It's not really that difficult to make gates. You can get a little bit creative. And I'm gonna show you guys that in the next video. So this is the first part of a two-parter. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. Come back and see how the gates come out when they're all done and ready to be used.